This video will highlight how Reactor is actually integrating multiple different panels in one coherent control surface. That is one of the main points of Reactor, that is we have designed it to not make any distinction between having a single panel with everything or having many panels as individual products connected with IP to Reactor. You can configure across any of these. This is how we make the mega panel work. If you saw that, that is like 10 Skyhawk controllers just working as one big panel although they are still 10 individual products. Now, in this case, what we have is the Rack Fusion Live, and I'm gonna connect that with two Stream Decks. And the Stream Decks are raw panel enabled by an application we sell to run on the Blue Pill. And the Blue Pill is this little guy. So actually on the Blue Pill, we have this uh, USB-A port, and we can connect the Stream Deck to that one. And that will make it into a raw panel surface that we can discover on the network and we can apply configuration and so on. So we'll be looking at that. And also I wanna show you how we can apply a paging paradigm to have some kind of navigation, just a simple one. But if you want to see how advanced configurations we can do in Reactor, you should watch some other videos. So it's uh, it's just to kind of uh, illustrate this to you in the clearest possible form I can. Um, well, we'll see how, how well I do. I, I tend to make things uh, complicated because I get excited about the technology. Um, but let's see how, how it goes in this video. Now, I have these uh, three devices on the table in front of me. Let me just introduce our USB hub. And the USB hub will be connected with the USB-A to the blue pill. So let's just do that. Okay, so USB hub and blue pill. The USB uh, hub is powered. Why? Because I cannot power more than one stream deck from the blue pill. So um, we will now take the, the USB connection of the stream deck panels and connect to, uh, to the hub here. And uh, we'll see them boot up in a second. So there we see the first one. And now comes the second one, the original stream deck over here. Now, these two panels, as they are booting up and showing the nice uh, Skahoy intro uh, screen, it actually means that they are discoverable on the network. But in the meantime, we want to set up a new project for this one. So we'll just go to manage projects on, uh, uh, yeah, by the way, I should introduce, this is React. So this is the panel management application running on this Rack Fusion Live. That is a blue pill inside device. It has the power of blue pill built into it. So the little uh, blue device that you saw just a moment ago here is um, that that has like the main brain of uh, our panels inside of it. Uh, but this, this panel has it running inside of itself. Okay, watch a different video for that. <laughs> now, um, we will create a new project on the Rack Fusion Live. We'll just call that playing with modularity and add all right we'll just save and we'll say yes we want to activate this project so that gives us a blank project on the right fusion live and that with that we'll add two extra panels now by default when you do this you just get the most typical configuration for the right fusion live that is the right fusion live with atom but we'll go straight to create a custom config and we can call this anything three panels so we'll just do that and we are ready with that one. Now, I'm going to discover panels on the network and you can already see that in my panel discovery on the network, I find two Stream Deck panels and they are actually being served from, let's just go to the other IP address that we have in mind here. That would be this one, that is the blue pill. So the little blue guy. And inside of that, um, we have an application running called X panel stream deck, this one down here. And that is the one that will turn these two stream decks into raw panel devices. You already see that they are saying something in that display. It says, uh, waiting for blue pill and over here waiting for blue pill. In fact, uh, on these two, you see the text is a little bit big and I would like to change that. So I'll just quickly go here and turn off large text because that's very useful if you have a stream deck plus because it has a higher screen resolution. It also is kind of useful on the stream deck XL. But in this case, I rather want to turn it off. Ah, now we have the uh, screen saver on. Okay, so there we go. Um, I want to then save and restart. So now they're rebooting and you'll see the text is slightly smaller. So we use the full resolution of the displays inside. Anyway, that's just a small detail. The fact is that this application on the blue pill is now serving these two panels. If we go back to the right Fusion Live, and if we are searching on the network for these panels, we'll see in the panel discovery that they are popping up. So let's just wait a, yep, there we go. We have the Stream Deck XL. I'm holding down shift because that will allow me to select this one. And then I'll have a chance straight away to also add that one. So this is how easy you add additional panels. And you know what guys, if we had, let me see, 
uh, let's say that we had um, even an old body like this guy from um, the the legacy pool of Skyhawk controllers on the network, it would actually appear with this uh, discovery function that would search for panels on the network. Now, these two are added. So uh, even if I go to the simulator, you'll see them straight away in the simulator. We'll see the, um, or we should see at least, the two new controllers we just added. So let's just, um, hey, please. Yeah, okay, there we go. I don't know, it has to refresh. Now, uh, it, we, we have the three panels arranged here. That is super nice. And um, I, we're, we're basically ready to configure. Now, if you go to the home screen, you'll see that we have a new configuration for the Rec Fusion Live, but we have like nothing for these two. And generally, when you add new panels, the most typical mode is that these panels will have an individual configuration on their own. It is a more rare scenario that you want to do modularity. And uh, what I would basically do is to go to the configuration tab of this one. And I think that the most clever thing I can basically do would be to edit the configuration of the three panels to add support for the two stream decks here. But um, just to give you an idea what is lying in front of us, in this configuration UI, if I hold down shift and I drag across the elements, I'm dragging across the elements. You see that I can actually select elements across controllers and I'm able over here to basically apply configuration to them. Let's, okay, let, let's try and do it. I'll go to this one on this layer and I right click on all the components that I just selected, create behaviors. So it's, it's now saying, do you want to create behaviors? Behaviors is like a placeholder for functionality for each of these elements. Yes. And it's going to do that all over here. Now look at the panels. On the panels, you see stuff immediately came into the display. And this is the dummy action. What it does is it shows you the name of the action. You see it says button and button and it says A2 and so on. That's basically the name of the component that is being put into the display. And um, that, that indicates that we're actually sending some stuff over. All we need to do now is to combine this with actions on your ATEM switches and your uh, OS uh, C devices and whatnot. Um, actually, I want to undo this, so I'll just go back because I also want to create pages. But I also want to show you that if we do this in a little more clever form, then we can actually have the home screen realize that a configuration we create is supporting three panels of a specific type. So I would do wisely in just remembering the type of this panel. So I'll kind of copy paste this. So take the model name here, which is Stream Deck Excel. And I also remember the one called original. I go into configuration, edit raw here, because we need to do this in JSON. Now, what you're seeing right here, the metadata called panel mapping is one that you find in every configuration for single panels. Usually you have like panel number one is mapped to a number of models that is supported by the configuration. So what I'll do now is to add model number two. And um, for this one, I also need to, yep, uh, create this. And then I just paste in Stream Deck Excel. And now, I'm just going to copy this to panel number three, and we will make sure this is the original like this. Okay, perfect. So we save this, and uh, I can close this one down, and I think I'll just for safety reload this one. Now, let's go to the home screen, because on the home screen, what you'll see has changed now is that the first configuration here is saying, hey, I am missing a panel, and that panel could be the Excel. And then it's disappearing from down here, and then I select the, the last one. So basically now, with the three panels connected, I have combined those. I've basically made sure that these are mapped into, into my configuration here. And um, also you can notice the panel IDs. This is panel ID 1, 2, and 3, and that is probably going to align pretty well. If you, if you go into this, uh, the root layer, in the root layer, you will probably see that there's this HVC key map that is mapping panel 1 to panel 1, panel 2 to panel 3, and so on. But um, it's kind of coincidental that these are now perfectly aligned. But it could also be that whatever we call panel number one, two, and three inside the configuration should be mapped to panel five in the actual setup of panels on the exterior from here. Um, so it's, it's just a small detail, but let's close this one down and then open up this layer because now on three panels layer, we have uh, the, the support for the three different panels. Let's go back to creating pages. So that's the second lesson we are going to do here. And I am now holding down shift and uh, dr dragging across the first nine buttons here. And let's assume that I want to add 
some buttons from the Stream Deck XL and from the Stream Deck original. So I'll just hold down Shift again, but now also Command on my Mac keyboard and drag across these. So they are adding themselves. And then finally, I'll just take the top row here. Now, in this case, I, I could have taken everything, but now I just take specifics and make pages out of those. So um, instead of just going to the bottom of this page and creating behaviors, what I want to do is to create pages. And pages means that we have like a number of pages, just like you might have seen in the Stream Deck configuration um, uh, application itself. If we right click, create pages and say, hey, I want to have 10 pages with these specific behaviors. That's what I'm, I'm going to do now. Now, look at the panels over here on the video. You see that immediately the selected components, hardware components on the panels are now associated with some dummy content. And if we open up this layer, you see that we have page one, we have page two, three, four, five, and so on, up to page 10. And we also have a variable called select page, which is used to manage this. So if I go into this variable, you can see that I have these um, 10 options being created for, for the variable. And if I'm clicking this flag, I'm changing the value of the variable. Let's say that I change it to page 10. What you will see is that the, the layup called page 10 is going to be highlighted on the side here with a blue bar. Let's just do that. But also notice on the displays, as I do so, you'll see a little bit of a change in the display content because now it says page 10 colon and then the name of the component. That is our dummy content. It is just helping us to see that, hey, our navigation is actually working. So as I'm now changing the value of the driving variable called select page, it is also changing down here on the displays. Across three controllers, they could be anywhere in the world. It doesn't really matter because Reactor is able to bring it all together. Now, of course, you would have them next to each other. But what it means is that you can have like, if you look at the uh, XE series from Skyhoy, our, our main big controllers, then they are perfectly aligned. They even um, magnetically snap together. So you can basically take two of these, put next to each other and consider that one controller if you have a configuration that spans across them. So that's a very powerful concept, but we can do that with any controller, including these Stream Decks, if we wanted to. Okay, so um, what I wanted to do now is just to wrap this video up by showing you how we could also have a little paging function. We could either put that on the panels themselves if we want, or we could put it on an encoder. So let's just um, go to this layer three panels, uh, click the encoder here or right click it. Ooh, let me see, right click, create behavior, uh, do that on three panels, that's fine. Uh, we'll select the variable that we have created, select page and step change is all we need. So actually now on this encoder up here, you can see that it says page 10. But I, and you can also see it on the screen here, but as I'm turning that, you see this is changing now. Just, just notice what is happening here. Uh, we can see it in the simulation. As I'm turning the encoder up here, I am also changing which page we are on and we see that the visibility of the pages here is also changed. That is the blue line. See the blue line is basically sweeping across the layers to show you which one is active. Uh, that is pretty neat. Um, I have seen other applications where you put the page navigation on the individual buttons. Well, because these applications are kind of limited. They have only like a page paradigm of like 99 pages for your Stream Deck and a single Stream Deck. Now, you can have any number of pages and any uh, number of page sets inside of Reactor, as, as many as you want. You can put your navigation outside the pages or inside the pages. In this case, uh, it, it would kind of be stupid to put it inside the pages because then I would have to create navigation on every single page. What if I could just create a layer on top of everything? And that layer would give me um, navigation across all these pages. So I could basically and basically, that's what I did with the encoder. I just created it on an encoder. And if I wanted to have it on key number A1 here, for instance, I would just have chosen not to include it in my pages to do so. Um, yeah, so in a sense, I've already proven the point, but um, I, I, I still think that I want to try this out. So I just create a page called nav. And uh, this page is a child page on top. Whew. Yeah, so it is all the way up here on the top. So what I'm gonna do now is to right click this guy and I am creating a behavior on the nav page, right? Yeah, okay, that's exactly what I want. So what I'm doing right now, and let me just show you, if I, let me just choose some background color we can easily identify, okay? So I'm just on this behavior, giving us a red color on this button. 
we see it's red over here on the panel and I want to make this a navigation key. So I kind of do the same as I just did with the encoder. I just go up here on the behavior, choose variable, select page, submit. It will choose step change as my master behavior. And if we go here, you can see on this four way button, I can now navigate as well. But you see, regardless of which page I'm on, if I go back to all the way back to page number one, you see here, I actually do have a behavior called A1. But because the navigation layer is on top of everything and there we also have the behavior A1, it will always supersede any of the other layers. So this is why it's grayed out. That means this behavior A1 right there will not, and in this case, because this layer is always shown, it will never mean anything. It is always overridden by that one, as long as this layer is visible. You see the same if we go to layer two, uh -uh, it is not used. It is not used on layer three either. So that is basically what you get by doing this. Now, of course, you would not have included A1 inside of your page set if you wanted the navigation to be inside of the pages. That's probably true. So um, in, in the first case, you wouldn't have done it. And you could also then just have had it on the three panels layer on the very bottom if the layers up here are, is not overriding. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. This is, um, I think, very exciting concept inside of Reactor that we can do this, you know, cross panel configuration and page scheme. P very powerful, very powerful. We can combine different types of controllers to achieve the kind of control with the exact form factors that you guys are looking for. And I'm very excited to bring this technology out to you.